you're a home buyer, somebody or a young person looking to buy a home, you need a bit of a reset. There, there is a possibility on the other side of this that that uh, inflation could be could actually be quite low. You good. Thank you for checking me out. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. And today I'm gonna to go over data that is gonna make you guys on the sideline that have been waiting very excited. Cause what I'm about to show you guys that we have the biggest median sales price decline for existing homes that we've had all year. On top of supply, literally going straight up. So I'm gonna show you data that the line for supply is going straight up. And you guys, I'm gonna be doing that as I'm driving from Boise all the way to Reno. And if you guys can do me a favor for all of this effort, for all, for driving thousands and thousands of miles, 44 hours total drive time, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, shoot me a comment below and please you guys, please, for the sake of everything that's holy, pray for me as I make this trip because look at all the snow, I could tell you right now, <laughs> I, have, I have no experience driving in ice. But either way you guys, I hope you guys find my perspective valuable and I hope you guys find the data valuable as well and I want you guys to know I absolutely appreciate you and I definitely, definitely want each and every one of you to win. All right guys, there's one thing that I did not want to go through on this trip, which was black ice. So I just went through my first black ice situation going through these mountains right here. In fact, there's a bunch of diesels like parked over here and black ice is absolutely crazy. I'm driving down the mountain road and I see a diesel that's basically parked literally in the lane that I'm driving. So I go to the left of the diesel and the back end of my car starts going fishtailing. It's absolutely insane. Here's a snowplow. Finally, the snowplow right here is doing some stuff. Good, 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 good. So anyways, guys, this is absolutely a nutso right here. Never been through black ice. Started going down, started leading the pack, had four cars behind me. I pulled over. And when I pulled over, so did, to put on my four by four, so did all of the people that I was leading. They also pulled over because everyone's afraid to go down this hill right now when there's black ice. There's a snow zone warning right here. And you know what? I'm just gonna take this as a moment to compare the housing market to black ice. If you're shopping in the housing market right now, you're not properly prepared, you don't have the right equipment, the right team, you're not paying attention to what's going on, you can swerve and freaking fly off the cliff. Half of the areas that I'm driving right now have no guardrail. So anyways, just wanted to pull over. I just got to Oregon. I'm about to go through a snow zone. Just wanted to show you guys Super scary out here. The name of the Redfin article that we're gonna to review today and it's gonna get extra spicy is titled, Housing Market Update, Monthly Mortgage Payments Fall, New Listings Post Biggest Annual Uptick in Over Two Years. Now before I really jump into the data, well first of all, I got through the mountains, there was at least three car accidents, people rolled down the hill, basically just drove right off. Not 100% sure where I'm at, small gas station in Oregon somewhere you guys can see. This has been quite a trip. Take a look where I'm at. <laughs> this is a dangerous trip. I already feel so the life is sucked out of me. Can you see it in my eyes? Let's go into a little bit of the Redfin article now. And I wanna give you the conclusion of what they have to say so we can see what Redfin's perspective is. And I quote, Mortgage rates are dropping due to easing inflation and investors betting the Fed will cut interest rates sooner than expected, said Redfin. Declining rates along with a sizable year-over-year -year increase in new listings are leading to more favorable conditions for some buyers. My advice for serious home buyers is to compare housing cost to recent highs instead of long ago lows. Housing costs are at their lowest level in three months and it's unlikely they will drop significantly anytime soon. That makes it a relatively good time to lock an interest rate. And I wanna remind you, and specifically the bulls, everything that is happening right now is in the front end of recession. It is in the front end of unemployment. How do I know this? Why am I saying this? Well, histor history, historical data like the yield curve inversions. All right, guys, it's nighttime. I made it. I stopped short Reno, about 90 miles short of Reno in a little city called Lovelock where it is 
<laughs> this has just been a wild day. I didn't want to drive another 90 miles. This has been absolutely crazy trip. Worse than the Dallas to Denver trip. This is just completely wicked. But regardless, you guys, let's go into this week's leading indicators. Starting with mortgage rates, they are sitting at a 7.13%. So they have gone down from the 8%. Now the weekly average is at 7.29%. And if we keep going here, we can see mortgage applications are up 5% from a week earlier, but unfortunately down 19% year over year. So we're filling the recession right now in real estate, obviously. If you keep going down, you can see that home buying demand is down year over year, 5% year over year. That is absolutely wonderful. The QT is starting to work and on top of many other things. Now, Google searches for homes for sale is down 13% from a month ago. Now, as far as year over year, it is flat according to them. Now, here is something completely, completely shocking. Take a look at this, guys. Touring activity is down 38% from the start of the year. And at this time last year, if we look at year over year, it is down 40%. That is absolutely remarkable. And if we go down here to look at the winners and losers this week, let's start in the winners column, starting with Anaheim at 19.3%. Again, that's year over year. If we look at peak, it is way less, but as far as year over year, 19.3%. That's astonishing. San Diego back on the list, sitting at an increase of 13%. Then we have Cincinnati at 12.3 and Miami at 10.5, followed by Providence, Rhode Island at 9.9. .9. Now, many of the winners on this column, you know, it's pretty easy to see why they have been resilient so far, essentially no inventory, no inventory for new homes and no inventory for existing homes. So that's why I think that plus it's old money, like San Diego's got a lot of old money. So no doubt that is propping up. Now let's take a look now at the losers column. We have additional metro areas, seven total that are on the year over year price decline list, starting with number one at Austin, Texas at 9.2% whopping blow to Austin. And I want to remind you guys that's without foreclosure and that's without unemployment. So again, without unemployment, employment, without foreclosure, without a recession, it's still down 9.2%. And if we look at peak, it's down much more than that. Now, number two is San Antonio, Texas at 1.7%. No doubt that's down because of the inventory from new construction. That's what I believe. Anyways, that is my perspective. Now, Portland, Oregon is sitting at a year over year decline of 1.3%. So probably that's on this list because of the migration out from the job market, maybe because of crime as well. Crime is probably a huge reason. Look at this, guys. Number th four is Detroit sitting at 0.8. Probably a crime situation as well. And my home city, my hometown is now on the list. I told you guys it was coming in Houston. Houston is down 0.5% year over year. Now, Nashville is also down 0.2% year over year, followed by Denver at 0.1% year over year. So here's my beautiful hotel around me. As you can see, you guys, I miss home. It is what it is. <laughs> I miss my loved ones. What can I do? But let's go into a data visualization right now. And let's take a look at this week's week over week info, starting with median sales price. And as you guys can see, we had a healthy drop of median sales price, actually a very significant drop. Last week, we were at 367 750,000, so 367, 750. Now this week we're at $364,730. So we had a roughly $3,000 drop in median sales price. Now moving on to median asking price, that's up 6% year over year. The gap is narrowing between sold price and asking price, but median asking price is actually down week over week, but up year over year at $371,225. Moving on to home buying housing payments. Now that's up a whopping 13% year over year. And there lies the problem, the affordability for the average person and went up way too much to be sustainable. I mean, everyone knows that by now, but right now it did go down week over week. It's actually gone down probably the last five weeks. We're now sitting at $2,575. Now that is down, I think roughly $150 from peak, but nevertheless, it's up a, it's up a massively, you guys, probably a thousand dollars, close to a thousand dollars in just two years. So don't be deceived by that slight decrease over the last five weeks. New listings is up year over year 6%. So we have more new listings coming to the market than we did last year. In winter months, inventory is coming to the market. And that should tell us that home buying demand 
is wrecked. However, active listings are down year over year at 7%. So even though new listings, there's more new listings coming to the market, we still don't have the inventory that we had at this time last year. Now, obviously more than likely that will continue to go up, hopefully until 2025, into 2025. Now take a look at this guys. This trajectory is literally a straight up. Okay, so this is going straight up. We're looking at the months of supply. So right now, we are sitting at, thank goodness, 4.2 months of supply. Now we peaked roughly at 4.5, 4.6. So we almost have a yearly high of supply. Now remember, a balanced market is, any, is usually about four to five months of supply. A buyer's market is six months or more of supply. So again, sitting at 4.2, but I really want you guys to pay attention to the trajectory of that line because that is straight up like a rocket. Now take a look at listings that had price drops. We're sitting at 5.7%. That is a four year high for this period. And you can see very, very interesting that has been plummeting over the last two weeks. So still historically high for this time. What I think this is, is basically sellers being more realistic about their listing price. So hopefully they're using the comps, they're being more realistic, maybe a little bit of desperation, who knows, but we're still sitting at a high of 5.7% in price cuts. Now, last but not least, let's take a look at demand. So demand is actually down 5% year over year. Again, that is a four year high as far as demand being wrecked. So again, four year high, obviously in 2020, you know, March to April, it was actually lower than that, January to April rather, but that was lockdown time, so that makes sense. So again, this is great news. So let's recap real quick, guys. And first of all, I apologize. <laughs> It got a little crazy there. I know I was ranting and I know I told you guys perspective is important, but I also told you that we need to filter who we listen to because some people will only say things to generate money. And that's kind of why I went off a little bit today. So please forgive me for that. I'm really trying to point out what I believe is obvious. People are saying things because they want to make money and they will change with the tide. So if the housing market starts to crash like I believe it will, a lot of these bulls that were slamming us for the last year are going to just switch their narrative and continue to make millions and hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I just wanted you guys to be aware of that. Obviously, I care about perspective. I care about you guys. I want to get you guys equipped, okay? And also to clarify, I had a couple of comments like, Travis, you're, you're starting to crack the housing market crash you don't believe in it that's far from the truth all i'm doing you guys is strengthening my perspective and i'm trying to lead my viewers to get smarter to be more empowered to understand the process of purchasing even more not for one second do i believe that the housing market is going to have a soft landing i'm pretty positive that on a nationwide average home prices are just going to continue to go down from now and hopefully until 2025. Now, obviously it depends on what the Federal Reserve does next, but what we should be doing, what I'm doing as I'm on the sideline myself looking for a house, I'm increasing my purchasing power. My credit is going up, my income, Took a little bit of hit, but I'm gambling on myself, you guys. I have self-employment, so my purchasing power is still there, but also I'm saving money. And don't forget this, we get paid to wait right now. I put my down payment into treasuries, into one month treasuries. So I'm getting over 5% back by waiting. And also, I just switched my credit card. I got an Amazon credit card. So my Amazon purchases now, I get 5% cash back. So I'm doing everything I can basically to utilize the inflation. I'm trying to use the inflation to make money to help help offset the additional expenses. So I think that might be a good idea for people on the sideline. I don't know, but that's certainly what I'm doing. If you guys can, do me a favor again, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. I am absolutely exhausted. Again, you know, I can't believe I stopped short, but honestly guys, you know, I probably saw three or four cars that rolled off the hill. The police were there. There's all kinds of craziness going on. Uh, I hit a blizzard on the way here, so it's pretty crazy. But um, I'm looking forward to Reno. After Reno, I'm going to Sacramento. I'm going to meet up with Johnny Fly. I'm going to meet up with Jason Walter. Johnny's going to interview Jason and I, and then also all three of us are going to start walking some communities in Sacramento. So look out for that. Super excited. Big shout out to the Discord members. I absolutely love you guys. Thank you for you looking after me and communicating with me and uplifting me. I can certainly use it, especially because I don't have my support team, which is basically my wife. So Shara, if you're watching this, I love you. And other than that, guys, if you're out there investing in real estate, you guys know I wish you luck and I hope you win.